Hey Joe, um, I just happened to see your video because I was checking to see if Inventam had posted any videos recently and um, you know I, I typed his name in the uh, search box and your video popped up and I don't know why my uh, subscription to your channel wasn't still active. Uh, I resubscribed to you, I certainly didn't cancel it on purpose but um, you know I've missed a lot of videos that you've been doing lately. I'm going to go through and watch those, but I wanted to respond to this video about uh, Dr. Albert Ellis and his rational emotive therapy and cognitive behavioral therapy in general, um, especially as it relates to Buddhism. I think, uh, you know, there's certainly some similarities between these, these two, and, you know, psychotherapy and Buddhism are uh, have much in common in the very get-go just because they're both trying to change the human being for the better psychologically um, but that and they both say that this is possible you know the Buddha says that everyone has the Buddha nature inherent in them and everyone can therefore realize their own enlightenment and the psychotherapist says that uh, psychological health is a possibility for each patient and um, there are various techniques to achieve it so there's that similarity, but there I think the similarities end. Um, you know, not that cognitive behavioral therapy isn't powerful and doesn't work in its own respect, um, but the Buddhist method is also powerful, but it works in a different way, I think. And, you know, like you said, Joe, the, the path to enlightenment or psychological wholeness or well being doesn't really matter as long as you get there. But, um, uh, one of the crucial differences we could say between Ellis's approach or just the Western approach in general is that Buddhism does not erect as sharp a distinction between feelings and thoughts as we in the West. Um, you know, a good example of this is that in Pali, um, the heart and the mind are contained within one word, sita. So, or sitta, I, I don't know how to pronounce it, but C-I-T-T-A. So, there is no d division erected between thought and feeling. So, to say that um, it is our thoughts that cause our feelings is no more true than to say that it is our feelings that cause our thoughts from a Buddhist perspective. Which one comes first is not the point, that there's a circular relationship between them. Um, they each cause one another. Our feelings sometimes cause our thoughts, and then our co thoughts cause new feelings, which cause new thoughts, and so forth. Um, so there's then this chain of that, and that, you could say, is the, um, you know, endless wheel of, of birth and, and rebirth that the uh, enlightenment is freeing us from, uh, this chain of having a feeling and the thought and the feeling as just an act and a reaction continually recurring. Um, so, Buddhism emphasizes meditation because of this lack of a distinction between thought and emotion or feeling, whereas cognitive behavioral therapy or even psychoanalysis emphasizes self-talk or talking through the problem in order to shed uh, conscious light on it so that you can, by verbalizing the problem, um, talk yourself into shape, uh, so to speak. Um, this can work, and it does work for many people, but um, it can also lead to just as much frustration, because many times your problem is unconscious, and it's very difficult to get it to the level of verbal expression. Um, and when this is the case, the Buddhist method of meditation may be more useful, and certainly if you're seeking more than just the stability of your ego, but you actually want enlightenment, which psychoanalysis is really only trying, at least a secular, non-transpersonal version of psychoanalysis, just trying to give you back your regular egoic mind in a stable sense so that you can go to work and, and survive. Uh, it's not trying to make you enlightened. It's not trying to give you self-actualization or individuation, to use Jung's term. It's just trying to give you stability. But if you want enlightenment, and you, you approach Buddhism with that kind of spiritual yearning, it's going to help you solve problems that are way below 
anything you could ever verbalize conceptually, like, you know, the fact that you're going to die. Everybody has an unconscious fear of that, and even pronouncing it like I just did doesn't really help you settle that. Um, but meditation is a method to attempt to help you settle death and impermanence in general. So, instead of focusing on self-talk, you focus on the continual arising of the mind itself, and the arising of thoughts within the mind, including the thought of I. Um, you know, Buddhism would agree with, with Ellis about the nature of the I, that it is um, something that we falsely attribute to others and to ourself, when really there's a continual process of of uh, behavior which is developing that we do have some free influence on, um, but that can't really be contained within this single identity because we're always changing, we're always developing. Um, I think one thing we could we could that psychoanalysis could learn from Buddhism is the idea of dependent origination that an individual's behavior isn't just a result of their own thoughts, but it's a result of the um, their peers, the people they interact with on a day-to-day -day basis. It's a result of their thoughts, too. Um, you can't be fulfilled and, and whole as a psychological, uh, as a psyche. You can't be whole in a community of other psyches who aren't whole, because your sense of yourself is tied to your interaction and, and communication with these other psyches. So, you know, this is why Buddhists become part of a sangha or a monastery or a, you know, a Buddhist community because they want to be with others who are serious about the same sort of, of path of transformation. Um, and certainly though it's the Bodhisattva's vow, once you've attained enlightenment, to return to the world amongst other psyches that, that are not as whole as they could be and, and to try to alleviate their suffering through compassionate action. Um, so certainly as a Buddhist you're not trying to withdraw from the chaos of the real world or the relative uh, instability and, and high degree of suffering in the real world. You're trying to alleviate as much suffering as you can. Um, but you can only really do that once you've attained your own enlightenment. And that, would be, that would be the Buddhist claim. Because otherwise you're, you're just adding to the suffering and the ignorance by, uh, by trying to fix it. Um, but yeah, bottom line is there's certainly some similarities between psychoanalysis and Buddhism, but there's just as many differences. And I think the key difference is that there's no dualism in Buddhism between the heart and the mind or between thoughts and feelings. Um, we aren't to accept one and reject the other or make sure that one is always leading or controlling the other because they're not separate things. Uh, they're two poles of the same circular process, really. So, uh, but you know, I, I appreciate your, your video and bringing up uh, Ellis. And um, I'm gonna go watch some of your other recent videos, so take it easy.